But we're losing a mayor. That means we're losing a police commissioner, et cetera, et cetera, possibly. And that means that change is about to come. How is that change going to affect our community? That's what is critical to us. Follow the assessment. Maybe we have to set up small groups throughout the city and the neighborhoods that will specifically just have the responsibility of evaluating and being watchful citizens as it relates to the assessment. To welcome each of you to our, our updated forum on the uh, Department of Justice uh, recommendations that were given and uh, on behalf of NAN, I'm Matthew Smith, president in Philadelphia. Mr. Paul Fevers is our board chair lady. And we have some to introduce you all as the chair lady of the Pennsylvania National Action Network, Ms. Paula Peebles, give her a great hand. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Smith, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out your busy, busy day, your busy evening, to come out and to get an update from Calvin Anderson from the Police Advisory Commission. Um, this is a very important undertaking. It's unfortunate that a lot more people in our community don't understand how important this issue is. They don't understand until they lose a loved one as a result of a police officer who lost his or her cool. They don't understand until one of their loved ones are wrongly brutalized by the police or locked up. And at that time, that's when they find our phone number they chase us down and say, we need Nan to help us because the police has my child or the police have law, has killed our child. We, for um, some seven years up until last year, excuse me, up until last year, it took us seven years to get the Department of Justice here. We took two reports down to the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C to try to convince the Department of Justice that there was a problem here in Philadelphia with the um, um, police department and their use of deadly force. Finally, in 2014, they heard our voices. Um, and we don't care the fact that the voice that the city gives credit to is Commissioner Ramsey. And we've told him that. It's all right with us because it's in print that National Action Network undertook this effort. It's in print the news articles or articles regarding our taking up this issue to get the Department of Justice in Philadelphia County. What is important is that we were able to get them here. They did a report that came out with 91 points earlier this spring. 91 points of recommendations and improvement to the Philadelphia Police Department. At that time, we said to the Department of Justice and to the Philadelphia Police Department under Commissioner Ramsey, uh, Charles Ramsey, that in fact, we were gonna be vigilant about this, that we're gonna to continue to make certain that the community is informed about the progress or the lack thereof. In Philadelphia County, particularly in the black community, we have a real reason to be concerned because we have a new mayor, him or her, that's going to be taking over the second floor in January. We need to know where those two candidates stand as relates to the 91 points that of recommendations in whatever progress that's shared with us tonight by um, Kelvin Anderson. We want to know where they stand regarding those 91 points. Do they agree? Do they plan to enforce them? And if so, what's their ideas? What's their proposal? What's their um, intent? What's their vision as it relates to the enforcement of the assessment from the Department of Justice? The Department of Justice made it real clear to us. They can't make Philadelphia Police Department enforce um, the 91 points. If you remember, I believe it was the um, head of the FOP that did not agree with 
many of the points in the assessment because they felt that we were basically policing them too much, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, we're here tonight to, and we want to thank um, Kelvin Anderson. He's been a real trooper in support um, and a balanced person. He makes certain when he presents that he doesn't present in favor, favor of the police nor in favor of the community. He gives a balanced perspective. And to say, and then when he gives a balanced perspective, we know that means he's going to give a truthful perspective as it relates to our community and the excessive use of force that we've experienced too long in this city for too many decades. So we want to thank. I thank the folks at NAM for staying on top of this uh, issue and trying to communicate the importance to everyone in the community. I think, as Paula pointed out, one of the things we have to remember is that. Despite the fact that the Justice Department has handed us a pretty good blueprint for some of the changes that are necessary in our police department, it's going to be up to us to make sure that this all happens. Once the Justice Department wraps up with the third uh, part of the review, and I think now this is a good time for me just to give you a, a sense of how this is, this is going to unfold over the next year or so. This report on the shootings was issued um, back in March of this year. So uh, there are three parts of it. The initial report lays out the problems that the Justice Department investigators found with the police department. Um, namely, in our department, there was a serious issue with the training of our officers. Our officers are not trained properly to deal with deadly force. Uh, there are some very serious recommendations on changes needed at the police academy and the curriculum that the officers receive. There are also problems with the way these cases are investigated. The department needs to update its method for investigating these cases. They need to change the rules for investigating those cases. That's all part of the 91 recommendations that Paula mentioned. In addition to that, the department needs to be more transparent. That is. It needs to give us, the members of the Philadelphia community, information on when officers use deadly force, who the officers are who have used deadly force, what the conditions that they use them under, what the results of the investigations are. None of this has occurred here in the city, and that is part of the recommendation. And I, again, I want to thank the folks at NAN and all the many people who have been out in the street protesting about this for quite some time. Uh, this, as Paula pointed out, predates Commissioner Ramsey asking for the Justice Department to come in and uh, do this, rec make these recommendations. This is something that's been going on in our community, certainly since I moved here. I moved here back in 1982 from Pittsburgh. We had issues back then. So this is something that's not uh, something that's foreign to any of you in this room, and it's certainly not foreign to us at the Commission. One of the problems that we've had at the commission over the years is the police department would not give us the reports on the shootings. And I'm here to tell you tonight, if, we, if there is any good news, just this Monday, I got the first three reports from the police department as a result of these recommendations. Now going forward, every time an officer discharges his weapon and it, there's an investigation, that completed investigation will land on my desk and will be available share with you, the community. We think that this is a very positive uh, development. It's not the end. We've got a lot of work to do yet, but that's a good start. Okay. So I got those first. Since March and since these uh, recommendations have come out, a couple of things have happened. The police department has been moving forward very quickly with trying to institute the parts of these recommendations that are easier, to, to put it frankly. Uh, and that would be changing the rules and regulations for how the officers um, deal with shootings, or changing the rules and regulations for how the department does the investigations of shootings. One of the things, for example, that we've had problems with over the years is that when an officer um, is involved in a shooting and there's an investigation, 
that interview with the officer is not taped in any way. It's actually typewritten by the folks at Internal Affairs, like it's the 19th century or something. Huh. Uh, you know, the folks will sit there and they'll ask you a question, then they'll type your answer. Mm -hmm. um, that's not how any modern police department does it. Uh, you need to videotape those, mm -hmm. in, those investigations. You need to videotape those statements of witnesses. If you were to witness a shooting in the community, now what these guidelines say is that we have to videotape your statement. So later on, when that uh, investigation becomes a subject of either a query by us in the public or by uh, an attorney in a lawsuit, you have a videotape which you can take a look at instead of just relying on someone's written statement which is often changed or not quite what it, what it should be if you videotape it. So that's just one area uh, that, that we're going to see some serious change. The video will be done by Internal Affairs and the shooting team that investigates the case. That uh, those videos will be, they're actually going to be setting up a room out at the Internal Affairs Office where they will take video recorded statements. And hopefully, actually, that videotaping will not be done just in shooting investigations, but also in complaint investigations, of which there are considerably more uh, than, than shootings. Excuse me, Kevin. How soon after the incident will they be videotaped? Because you know, in some states, they give police three to five days to come and give their stories. That's right. And it's usually modified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. Uh, what Commissioner Ramsey has done, he's uh, set up a uh, system where the officers will be interviewed within three days of the actual incident. And that is, that's pretty standard for most departments around the country. So, you know, from our point of view, that, that is satisfactory. The problem here is the one area, or actually several areas in the recommendations that are getting pushed back from the Fraternal Order of Police is just that, um, the naming of officers within three days. In fact, last, in July, the um, Fraternal Order of Police filed an uh, unfair labor practice charge against the city and against the police commissioner for beginning to actually name officers and shootings. So we're going to have to watch very carefully what happens in Harrisburg as a result of that. In addition to that unfair labor practice charge, we're going to have to pay attention to the legislation that was just introduced by <clears throat> Representative Marina White, who is uh, a good friend of the FOPs up there in the Northeast. She introduced a bill that would do essentially the same thing, that would prevent the police department from naming those officers mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. three days. Uh, we're going to have to watch that bill very carefully. We're going to have to talk to our legislators about uh, our opinion on that and uh, not, frankly, not allow that to happen and to roll back uh, the recommendations that are in place. What's her name again? That's uh, Marina White. So the department has changed several of the directives around how shootings uh, are dealt with. They've changed uh, the rules for the way the officers should engage people. They've changed the use of force continuum, that is, how officers move from one level of force to another uh, in a certain incident. They've changed those rules in a way that other departments have done around the country to make that a much better um, process to uh, allow officers to uh, actually learn to use ground combat techniques. Part of the problem here is that our officers are not taught ground fighting techniques well enough. So they, what? They go quickly to the, the most deadly force because they don't have options in between using just their hands or using your mouth. You know the continuum of force. Of course, I'm going to tell you, please, sir, do this. No, sir, if you don't do that, then I'm going to put hands on you. Then perhaps I'm going to use a taser. Or maybe if I have pepper spray. Oh, but wait, Philly officers don't have pepper spray. That's another problem. Mm -hmm. so, so all of these things are now being changed. And the, the, the actual rules, the bureaucratic part of this, are being written to make that happen. Now, in terms of what we will see as folks on the ground, in terms of how this changes, it's going to be some time before we actually see 
this in practice, uh, to, be, to be totally honest about it. Different, different issues, different issues, issues and concerns. And concerns. I'm finding, I'm so, finding many, so many different, so many different mentalities. Different mentality. It, 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 hard. Seems hard. it seems hard. It seems it seems challenging. I don't say hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else, else is a challenge. Else is a challenge. Um, um. So, so, so I'm ready.